Okay, cool. So if if you want to follow along, um, you can just go to Stack Blitz and search for the uh, the project here. Um, WTF is a cold observable. Um, so I'm I, I'm recreating here a bug that came and bit me in the butt uh, a while ago, and it made me realize something very crucial about observables. Um, so uh, just to just to kind of show what's going on here, I, I, I just kind of threw this all into a single component for the purposes of demonstrating it. Um, and we have a heroes observable here um, that is kind of the source for our data, the source of truth. Um, I have a level up events subject here that is designed to emit events when a user decides to level up one of their heroes. Uh, so, so think of this in terms of like a kind of like an RPG game uh, where you have heroes with stats. So, so the idea for the heroes is we're going to listen to our level up events. We have um, a scan operator here that's going to kind of accumulate these events, and we're going to level up the hero uh, who we are, uh, who the user is clicking to level up. And we're starting with heroes just to give it a base case. So if we look at the template here, um, I'm using the map table, which is an extension on top of the Angular CDK table. So um, the, the important part is just I'm passing in table data, which is an observable. If we look at table data over here, our table data is this heroes observable. And we're just mapping that from sort of a dictionary object to an array. Um, and then, in addition, I have uh, one hero I want to call out in particular. So I'm going to put them in this card. And this is just a material card, if you all are familiar with that. Um, just a, and it, We're just putting the name, the level, the attack, all, all the stats right there. And uh, finally, if we need to, uh, and we probably will, <laughs> we've got some debug stuff to show at the bottom which is just a pre uh, element where we're taking our heroes observable. So that's kind of our key source of truth. And we're piping it to async and uh, throwing that in a JSON. So, so uh, really what we're setting up here is one source of truth with one observable that's sourcing the table, one observable that's sourcing our card, and then the debug is just hitting the heroes observable directly. So the, the error kind of shows up once I start leveling up my heroes. Um, and you can see if we compare Hammer and Macabeus, our first hero here, the one that's in the card, um, his attacks matches up, but his defense doesn't, speed doesn't, his health doesn't. And it's, it just, it, things aren't syncing up. And trying to figure out what in the world was going on here uh, drove me to discover something that was really cool. And the thing I discovered is what the flunk is a cold observable. <laughs> so uh, disclaimer before we get into this, RxJS is this huge learning curve. And I'm trying to go at it and uh, kind of distill some of this down into some obtainable knowledge. And I'm going to do a lot of hand wavy stuff. And um, I might sound a bit crazy, too, <laughs> just because there's a lot to conceptually like grasp before we can really understand everything that's going on. So uh, definitely go check out this all this stuff uh, yourself uh, so that you can understand it better, because that's, I think, where the real benefit of all this comes from. I'm going to show you. You know, this is this is what's going on. But it, for to really, I think, mentally grasp this, you're going to have to take this down and kind of do some stuff with yourself by yourself. So, where does an observable come from? Um, originally, the, the the inspiration for this is the Gang of Four observer pattern. You see here on the screen, this is like uh, just a very hand wavy explanation of what the uh, observer pattern looks like. We have a subject. And then we have observers registered to the subject. Um, and then when a subject changes, it calls update on the observers that are registered. And this way, all observers share the most up-to-date info. It's, it's, it's a, kind of a simple pattern, but it, 
it helps it, it keeps these things in sync, which is kind of what we're looking for here. Um, so what is unobservable? We saw in, in the previous example here, we had observers. So what, what is an observable? Um, that's a very loaded question. <laughs> and the best, the best answer I can give you is to check out Ben Lush's YouTube talk, where he creates an observable from, observable from scratch. He pretty much like live codes it in StackBlitz. It's awesome. You should check it out. But the main thing to get to is, at its core, an observable is just a function that you can subscribe to. Um, I'm just throwing up some of the uh, documentation uh, for an observable, the only thing on it is subscribe. Um, and subscribe takes a next function, which does something with values that are emitted, an error function that does something when errors occur, and a complete function that does something when the observable completes. Um, so let's see how that works. So going back to our component here, I'm going to open up our constructor a little bit. And I'm also going to open up the console. Oh, that's really cool. I can see <laughs> there's some people joining. Uh, that's, that's awesome. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uncomment uh, this piece of our constructor. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new observable. And I'm using an observer. And this observer is kind of, uh, the, it's the instructions to this observable of what to do. So when something subscribes to it, um, we're going to console log. First, we're in this observer's function. Then we're going to call next on the observer, uh, on the observer, and then we're going to call complete. And um, as you can see right now, everything reloaded. Um, so my obs, uh, my observable here is getting instantiated, but there's nothing in the console yet, including this. We're, we're not seeing this yet. Um, and we won't see it until we subscribe. So as I uncomment here, we see things are happening. <laughs> so, so first, just walking through how we're executing. First, we're calling that we're in the observer function. Then we're calling next. And that's emitting a foo. And inside of our subscribe, we have our function that is handling that emission. So we're taking that foo output, and we're console logging it. And then finally, uh, skipping over this error, we're completing the observer. And that's just calling this function down here. And we see completed. And so um, the, the interesting thing about this is because my observable is you know, not doing anything until we subscribe to it, um, that means we can subscribe to it multiple times, and each one of them kind of has their own execution context. So um, it, it, you'll see here, um, when we subscribe to the same observable several more times, um, we actually, even though this first subscription up here, we can see the observa observable completed, uh, we were still able to subscribe to that same observable several more times, and it kind of executed like we thought it would. Um, it is emitting the foo, but we're not doing anything with it. Um, we're just kind of uh, create subscribing and then letting it complete. Um, so just kind of unpacking that a little bit, uh, what that means is when you create an observable, what you're kind of doing is you're kind of instantiating a blueprint for a machine. And then when you subscribe to that observable, it creates the machine and it starts it based on the blueprint that you're passing in. And that's pretty much what makes uh, an observable cold. It's same with, uh, similar with functions. When you create a function, that doesn't mean you run the function uh, as soon as it's created. Uh, that means you have it so that later on you can call it. Um, but we can make observables hot. And so, the multicast operator exists for this purpose. So you'll see um, in a unicast uh, strategy here, we see these observables, and they have their subscriber. And each observable has its own observable execution that gets instantiated each time something's, each time a new uh, reference is subscribed to. And so there's kind of this one-to-one -one, um, 
relationship. Uh, however, if we wanted to multicast it so that we kind of share data between subscribers, uh, we have the option of doing that via multicast. Um, and so just going back to subjects again, just trying to tie this all together. Uh, a subject in an observer pattern, if, if we recall this uh, diagram we saw at the beginning, uh, we see the subject as, as the sort of source of truth for all of its observers. Um, so subjects in RxJS uh, are pretty much doing a very similar thing. Instead of, the only thing is instead of calling update on all of the different observers, we have sort of these, uh, an observer interface um, where we can call next or error or complete on a subject and that uh, gets passed down to each observer, and in this case, the observer is an observable. Um, so, so multicast is, when you use the multicast operator, you actually have to pass in either a subject or a subject factory into that multicast operator, and that is the mechanism by which our observable becomes hot. So using a subject, um, this is how that's going to look. We have on our observable, we pipe on a multicast operator. We pass in a new subject. And then we call ref count. And ref count does uh, something to connect uh, our observables to its subscribers. And uh, the, uh, an alternative to that is passing in a fa uh, subject factory, which is pretty much just a function that returns a new subject as opposed to just returning a new subject. And this is here so that when there are no more subscribers uh, for, this, um, for this subject, um, in, in the case of using a, just using a subject, the uh, observer would, would kind of complete and it would just be done. In the case where we pass in a subject factory, once all subscribers are done, it completes. But then if another subscriber attaches, uh, it kind of restarts. And so it, using this subject factory, it'll restart and create a new subject. And then we call ref count to kind of connect them again. Um, and since there are these two kind of strategies, um, part of RxJS as a library did was kind of name those. So with use, uh, passing in just a subject, so this is uh, not reinstantiating it uh, when uh, there are no more subscribers, we call it publish. And so any publish is actually an operator you can just call and it kind of does that piece for you. And then on the other side using the factory, uh, we call that share. And share actually will also ref count for you. So it kind of, you, you don't have to call ref count um, because share does it for you. Um, but wait, there's more, because in addition to having a strategy between publishing and sharing, we also have several different kinds of subjects, and each of them has slightly different behavior. Um, the regular subject, so this is like a vanilla subject um, that we saw in the previous slide, we actually don't omit until we get another event, until we observe another event, um, we don't emit something as soon as the subscription connects, which isn't really what we want a lot of the time. So it, um, the, an alternative to this is the replay subject, uh, which immediately emits the last n values as sort of as a next, um, where n is this cache size that you uh, declare when you instantiate a replay subject. And behavior subject is also kind of a good, good tool for this. Um, because it immediately, it, a behavior subject contains and is instantiated with a value, and when it, whenever you subscribe to it or connect to it, it immediately emits that current value and kind of tracks that current value as it goes. So um, behavior subject is a decent uh, alternative too. Async subject usually is not. <laughs> Async subject is kind of silly. It only emits when the a subject completes, and there, there's some use cases for that, but it's it's not really helpful for uh, for multicasting here. So um, along with those different kinds of subjects, we have more convenience on top of that. So you'll see here we have we're multicasting with a uh, replay subject and ref counting, and we can just say instead share replay. Um, so this will use a share strategy and a replay subject. 
And then another one we can do, um, so this is using the factory function. Uh, this is called publish replay, and you have to rough count still. And then finally, there is our um, using a factory function with the behavior subject, uh, and this we call publish behavior. Um, so so uh, this is helpful because RxJS is one very declarative. Um, part of the benefits of it is you can kind of just scan things and see what they mean. So when you start looking at stuff like this, it becomes helpful to you know, use a word to describe it instead, and that helps us to talk about it too. Um, so, so this is this is uh, helpful stuff and helpful um, helpful for us to communicate about it as well. I think. Uh, so, just to recap, we're going to do like a little uh, uh, tree here to show uh, all the different options you have for multicasting. So, um, if we want to restart from a factory after all subscribers on sub. Uh, if, if the answer to that question is no, then we want to publish. And if we want a replay subject, we can publish replay. If we want a behavior subject, we can publish behavior. Uh, if we do want to restart from a factory function after all subscribers of sub, then we can share. And if we want to use a replay subject with that, we can just call share replay. Um, so that's like everything you need to know about multicasting and subjects. Uh, and so we can look at our code now, and we can just figure out um, what's going on here. So, so looking at our heroes observable right now, and let's, let's throw away the uh, console log for now. Um, just, just going through what we, what we saw, what we, wa what we want to do is we want to take our observable, and we want to make it hot. So we want to share or publish or multicast this observable. And so what we're going to do, uh, and, and this is why I think it's probably the, the best answer to that question, is we're going to use uh, publish behavior. And that way we can actually get rid of our starts with operator as well. And we can call that with our heroes constant. That's our kind of our starting point. And then call our ref count to connect. And now, as we uh, change our information, we see everything is staying in sync. And um, everything is only being called once um, because everything has the same source because we're publishing uh, to a new behavior subject that's being managed by our heroes observable. So that's great. We, we solved a bug. And now you know what the flunk is a cold observable, I hope. <laughs> End of talk. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, do, uh, Michael, did you want to do like some questions? If, yeah, if there are? That's, that's what I was thinking. So if anyone has any uh, questions, can you see the audience? I can. I can see someone okay. raising their hand at the back. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, great. Hey. <laughs> I can't hear them though. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna fix that. Okay, cool. Oh, Caitlin, is that you? Hey. <laughs> How's it going? Could you? Sorry. Could you yeah. explain a little bit more about ref count? What that was needed for? Okay, yes. Um, so ref count is needed to, for calling connect. Um, without, um, it, if we were to uh, not call ref count here, let's, let's just see how that works. Um, so, so now we have sort of our heroes uh, observable, and we're publishing it to a subject, but as we click, um, we see that nothing's happening, right? Um, so, so th the reason for this is when you when you publish or share, the reason you need to call ref count is you still have to call um, connect at the after having published um, that observable. Um, and this, I'm sure, this sounds really weird, but um, but um, by calling publish behavior, we are um, 
a, an operator kind of takes an observable and creates a new observable from it. So when we call publish behavior here, we're creating a new observable. And this observable is actually kind of a special observable because it is hot. I think it's, uh, there's, there's a word for it. And I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head, but I think it's something like a connectable observable. So I think at this point, and I may fall flat on my face, but I think we can just say, oh, we can't do that in this but I think we can do it down here. Let's comment all this out. So if we take that heroes observable, and remember we haven't called ref count on it yet. Uh, I think we can just call connect. And let's see, did that work? Yes, it did. Um, and so right now connect is not, it's kind of not on the type because um, the, the typing's messed up right now, but by calling connect, on this kind of connectable observable, we're making it hot. So, so by publishing, just calling publish or just calling share or just calling multicast, you're not making it hot yet. You're giving it the ability to become hot by calling connect on it. Um, do, does, that, does that help you understand? Yes, sir, thanks. Cool. Does everyone here know about RxJS? <laughs> That's that's maybe the question I should have led with. I, I think everybody knows something about RxJS. <laughs> yeah. RxJS yeah. is definitely like this huge onion of unwrapping. And yeah. I've, I've gone through, in my, in my kind of learning curve of learning about RxJS, I've come to like five false summits where I think I understand everything. <laughs> Only to find out there's like all this stuff left to learn. And th this was one of my later summits. So, yeah. And to be clear, like I, I, when I first joined Narwhal, Zach works at Narwhal, by the way. And when I first joined Narwhal, uh, Zach was like the person that I would come to with all my RxJS questions. I love, uh, he, he knows like all kinds of stuff about RxJS. So, we're, I think we're, we have a treat today. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. That's very kind. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love RxJS. I feel like it's it's a really great way, I think, of just thinking about code um, and also sharing with each other code. It's, it's just in the way that it's so declarative, um, where rather than kind of squirreling away uh, code in you know some weird method, <laughs> like several lines down on your class, you can kind of just put everything in your pipe and just see see how that it unfolds instead so yeah uh, were there any other questions how much of a learning curve is there is this an easy or yeah you're gonna need a while <laughs> <laughs> um well it's it took me a while, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, it took me a while to get to a point where I understood everything. I think part of the reason for that was, um, you know, when, when, you're, when we're kind of set on our RxJS journey, um, we're kind of like, if, if you're an Angular developer, kind of saddled up with the HTTP client and um, you see, okay, I kind of see how this observable works. Um, but you're you're not really grasping the entirety of what you can do with the library. Like um, I, I would say, one of my first false summits was um, figuring out how to uh, sort of combine observables. So um, yeah, using operators like switch map or uh, combine latest or merge map or uh, exhaust map or any one of these you know, different kinds of map. You can kind of take two observables and uh, if you think of them as, as streams, you can kind of converge their streams together. So you can take information from one and then the other, um, which wasn't, you know, how I initially thought you would do that. I, I thought you would just kind of create observables inside of subscriptions and spawn more, spawn more things off of that. Um, that kind of led to really confusing code <laughs> because um, it was very hard to debug things and kind of had this prop that same problem I was describing um, where you'd have like pieces of code that were squirreled away somewhere 
uh, in, you know, inside of a subscription to some other observable that didn't make sense, it was very hard to follow, very hard for me to communicate, you know, what was going on to my coworkers and people I was trying to build stuff with. You know, I, I was kind of, uh, if you remember that image I had at the very beginning with the guy in, in front of his conspiracy board, that's, that's kind of what I felt like when I was talking about my code. It's like, <laughs> it, it all connects, you just gotta trust me, man. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 moving beyond that and getting to a point where you understand what the library is and what it's there for, you can kind of move away from that that start of the learning curve and down into something where you're like um, things things are going to feel much more natural for you. It's a lot more easier for you to communicate with coworkers and um, yeah, it's I don't know. <laughs> I hope that answers your question or approaches something coherent. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Oh. Sorry, one more question. Um, a yeah. bit of an outsider here. I know this is an Angular meetup, but I've mostly been working for the last four or five years with React and now I'm kind of going into <clears throat> trying to adopt more of a generic web component approach, which leads me to Polymer, which leads me to Angular Elements, hence I'm here. Awesome. Uh, so actually, uh, honestly, first time I'm hearing about, um, well, I've probably heard about RxJX, but first time I'm kind of seeing and hearing something uh, about it, like uh, in a form of a talk. Um, and uh, in your perspective, since you seem to be exploring this for a while now, outside of the Angular environment, um, how useful is it? What are the best use cases? Just like a couple of examples, if you have any, and uh, um, any you know know-hows um, for what you think it's good with Angular and without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, f first of all, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the Angular community, and welcome to you know. Welcome to the cool side of the block. <laughs> but um, I, I, I would argue, I, I think RxJS like really has a lot of applications beyond Angular. I, I think like um, R, RxJS, it, actually if you look at like NPM installs of uh, RxJS versus Angular or React or any of the, the frameworks out there, uh, RxJS has like uh, an order of magnitude more installs than any of the frameworks. Um, and I think that's, you know, some of that is because of just the nature of the the package. It's it's sort of like a utility library, so you get a lot of installs from it. But I think it is, you know, demonstrative of how far-reaching RxJS is. Like, I, I in, in my opinion, I, I think RxJS is kind of the future of front-end web. Um, and, and the reason for this is, um, Using observables, you can kind of, um, you know, in Angular, in, in an Angular context, we have the um, Angular change detection, which is what runs and what updates our components for us. Um, if I use RxJS, and if I use RxJS as much as I usually do, I actually take the change detection and I pretty much turn it off. Like I, I put on a uh, change detection to an on push. Uh, strategy, which is pretty much only updating when my observables update. And you can, like, um, without too much work, I can take my my sort of Angular uh, components, I can throw that into vanilla JavaScript, and it just kind of works, you know? Like, um, what I'm doing inside of templates is I'm calling, uh, if we look at my templates here, um, I have, you know, I'm using this async pipe that's provided by Angular, and that's that's sort of this convenience that Angular gives us to automatically subscribe to an observable, and it manages that subscription by the framework for us, which is great. Um, that's kind of what Angular is doing at this point because I've I've pretty much turned chain detection off. It's managing my observable subscriptions for me. Um, so, so going down to something like vanilla JavaScript or you know uh, something that's framework agnostic or to another framework, um, it doesn't take that much for me to transpose my code um, because in here everything's an observable. Um, I, so I think RxJS is extremely powerful for that reason. I think um, 
I think there's a lot of potential in the library for it to kind of uh, maybe like replace these frameworks at some point. If we can get to some way of just very easily, you know, do, doing what Angular does, which is take an observable and subscribe to it um, via our templates and manage that stuff. If, if there are, there's some libraries out there that we can use to manage that stuff for us. I think we're like uh, RxJS gets us very far in terms of, you know, what Angular or React is bringing to the table. Um, so I'm, I'm very, I'm very optimistic, I think, on RxJS's uh, impact. And, and I, I, you know, um, when I was, I, I learned a lot of the stuff I shared with you today about hot and cold observables and sharing subjects and stuff like that from uh, a, uh, the RxJS live conference. So all the core team got together and kind of did presentations. And I learned about, you know, different behaviors of subjects that I wasn't like fully aware of, as well as multicasting. Uh, like I knew you could multicast before having this conference, but I wasn't, it wasn't until I kind of heard these talks and then prepared this talk myself where I was really digging into all the details of it that I really realized, okay, this is all, this is all that's going on. Um, so yeah, I think, um, yeah, to, to answer your question, I, uh, the, Rx, the, at RxJS Live, there's just as many React developers as Angular developers. It's it's being used in the React community, is from from what I can tell. And I think it has a lot of applications, even uh, server side, in server side JS. Um, so I th I think we'll see a lot more of it um, going forward, and I'm very I'm very excited for that world. <laughs> does does that answer your question? I'm sorry, I I have a tendency to ramble, so. All right, anything else? Oh, yep. What's your favorite operator? <laughs> um, I will go, let's see. I'll probably go with tap. <laughs> Tap's the bad operator because it does stuff you, you shouldn't do. <laughs> so, so tap kind of uh, makes side effects. Uh, you call it so that you can do stuff. Um, out, kind of outside of the, the the context of your pipe, and um, I like it for that. It's sneaky. What's your favorite operator? Uh, I've used exhaust map a lot lately. Okay. I usually go with the switch map, but I know there's differences, and one of these days I'll make sure I fully understand them all. <laughs> <laughs> I know enough that I, I, I know where to Google for what each one does. So I, I do know that much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other questions? All right, well, Zach, thank you so much. This has been so informative. Thanks, thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.